Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I wanted to just wrap this project up. This is my Dayton Audio um, kind of collaboration with 123 Toy, and everything's done. I've finished the project, I've listened to it, I've taken measurements, and I just want to summarize everything in this last video, and then I'm done with it. I just would like to point out before I get going that I don't have a name for this thing, um, and I'm not really into fancy names like flowery names. I tend to stick to more technical names, but I can't think of one other than like Dayton 5 inch driver. So if you have any ideas that kind of make sense technically, uh, shoot a comment my way and maybe I'll name it that. So anyways, I want to start by showing you guys the final measurements. I'm going to walk through uh, the measurements I took and the results and kind of describe my feelings about how it turned out. Okay, the first thing I did was take impedance measurements. I didn't really keep track of sample numbering throughout this um, testing procedure, but we do know that one of the tweeters had a slightly taller FS, and I used cheap components, uh, crossover components that is, so it's possible that between the different tweeter measurements and the cheap crossover components, we get just a little bit of a difference right around 1800 hertz or so. Also of important note is the impedance minimum. Uh, this is firmly in the 8 ohm speaker category at a 7.3 ohm minimum. And everywhere else on the impedance measurements we see very good correlation. Everything's really close, uh, no uh, discrepancies. Okay, then I got the microphone out and took a measurement on axis of each speaker. And you can see here uh, the results. The first thing that I want to point out is the low efficiency. Being an 8-ohm speaker and an honest 8-ohm speaker, and being such a small woofer, we get very low efficiency. So this is 81 at best, which is quite poor. But anyways, another thing I like to point out is just how uh, tight the frequency response is, especially in the critical mid-range. There's a few diffraction dips and things like that above 3000 Hz, but Realistically, for uh, such a cheap speaker, this is a very good frequency response, even if it's not very loud, and especially considering how few of crossover components I used. That's extra impressive. There is a bit of discrepancy between both speakers, and this is because there was a little bit of discrepancy between the two woofers. Each sample measured slightly differently. Next up is measuring the off-axis. So I measured the off-axis, uh, as you can see, and I'm really happy with this result. There's a little bit of diffraction in and around 4000 hertz uh, due to just the baffle diffraction, but this is nearly textbook and I really can't complain. I'm very happy with this. Often when I'm looking at the off-axis response, I also kind of try to approximate the power response. But basically what you can kind of do is average the off-axis response and you typically don't want flat, you do want kind of a sloping down towards the high frequencies. This doesn't slope as much as most people would probably want. I'm okay with that as a, as a surround speaker. Um, I'm showing a bit of a, a power response dip in the diffraction zone. That might not be true to life, it might actually be flatter through there. But anyways, here's a rough approximation of the power response. Now I'm going to do the vertical off-axis response. So I flip the speaker on the side, because that's easier than moving the mic up and down, of course. Okay, and with that out of the way, we can see the off-axis response above the speaker axis. So this is as if you were sitting above the speaker. Or in the case of a surround sound speaker, what sort of sound signature would be reflected off of the ceiling? And I think this is an important measurement for a surround speaker. I think it's an important measurement for all speakers, but especially for a surround speaker. Here we are. And I think the first thing you'll notice is the big null that's happening right around 2000 Hertz. And this is when the two drivers start to interact out of phase because the distance between your microphone or your ear is changing relative to each driver. 
and eventually the drivers go out of phase and you get this suck out right at the crossover frequency really this is not desirable but it's inevitable next i'll go below axis okay same thing but below axis should be the same measurement right no not necessarily this really depends on the phase integration between both drivers and how that works out with the distances so this is below the axis so this is as if we were sitting on the couch the speaker was above us and pointed over our heads or something like that what we end up with is a slightly better result in my opinion uh, the null or the suck out at the crossover point is not as severe it's a little broader a little wider so ultimately pretty good vertical puller response for the speaker especially below the speaker lobe overall i'm really impressed with the performance of this speaker on paper okay so with that out of the way um i guess i'd just like to tell you about how i feel about how these turned out and how they're sounding and that kind of thing more the subjective side of things now that i've shown you the objective measurements i can kind of explain my personal feelings about them so just to start um the finish how they turned out uh the wood and and the shape and everything i'm really pleased with i i I'm really happy with that. I actually didn't, I kind of planned for a fancy build for these. I don't know why they don't really deserve it. <laughs> the cheap drivers, cheap crossover, but um, you know, they're so small that the cost of wood and everything and the time to build them wasn't that bad. Uh, and they turned out really good. Now, the only thing is the oil finish. I don't really want to disassemble them, but I kind of feel like it needs another coat now that it's been well, probably over a month, the oil has really soaked in and some of the wood grain you can tell is not totally saturated. Um, I wanted to point out a couple other things about construction. Uh, Toyd and I, we talked about going with ported enclosures and I think these really would benefit from porting, but in the end I stuck with sealed and I'm surprised no one brought it up. I thought somewhere in my um, construction videos someone would have mentioned no ports. But um, I did that because I'd like to get a mount and stick it on here like this and then it can attach to the wall because you know so they're up in the wall like this for surrounds and then I can kind of aim them or tilt them or whatever towards the listening position they're heavy these things are I guess because they're solid wood they're really heavy which is kind of nice you pick them up and you feel like ooh, I've got you know really nice expensive speaker in my hands even though they're um, really cheap parts so anyways that's how they uh, how the finish turned out and everything, aesthetically how I feel about them. So I'm, I'm really happy. Sound wise, um, you know, we went over the measurements and some of the things I'm hearing there, but uh, sound wise, I can tell they're really inefficient. They take a lot of juice to get moving and um, that's okay because in the positions I have them in in my theater, they're really close to me. So I don't have to have them uh, trimmed up really high to be heard properly in balance with everything else in the system. Um, but they are inefficient and so I think that limits their use. In terms of their performance as a surround speaker, I, I, I find them okay. They're a little bit localized sometimes. Um, you know, they don't have like the perfect off-axis response like a coaxial speaker would or a full range speaker or something like that. But their, their sound signature is quite clear and accurate so that helps kind of make the sound field feel a little more normal. For instance, gunshots and things like that, um, they make my wife jump. They, they sound uh, realistic and blended with the front speakers and things like that. So I feel like I'm getting a very realistic uh, um, experience from these as surround speakers. You've already heard some sound bites of these. Uh, they were in test enclosures, not the completed project, but it's good enough. Overall, this project, if I were to not include the wood in construction time and everything, I mean, we're talking $100 a speaker. That's actually very competitive. If you have materials and you enjoy building things, for $100 per speaker, at least here in Canada, it's you can go into Best Buy and you can pick up speakers that cost that much, but they're not going to be very good. Um, yeah, they'll have more resale value because they have a name on them. Uh, they'll come with grills. I didn't make grills, uh, but overall, I feel that this is a much higher quality product than I can buy for $100 at Best Buy. So overall, not bad. But I did have to scrimp and you know cut back on quite a few things to make this work. 
One last final thought. I hate small woofers. I, like, this speaker is not very big. A, a driver with one inch bigger woofer would have been no problem. It still would have had good enough mid-range to cross over where I did. Uh, the enclosure would have got slightly bigger. It would have been more efficient, more base. Man, like, I don't, who buys these things? Well, I did, but um, don't. They're, they're just stupid drivers. Uh, they're okay for uh, desktop speakers. A surround speaker like this, I guess they're okay. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe next time I would have gone for the bigger one. But unless you really have to use a small woofer like this, my recommendation is to not. It's, just, it's not worth it. So the tweeter, eh, I wasn't very impressed with this tweeter. Don't buy this tweeter either. I don't mince words. If I like a product, I like a product. If I don't, I don't. So hopefully that benefits you viewers out there. Um, Dayton makes some good stuff. I've used a lot of Dayton products, but these, this I would only use in an, you know, um, the proper application. This, I don't know if I would ever use it again. It's not very good. So anyways, that's how I feel about the components. I use very cheap crossover parts in this thing um, because it's a cheap speaker and I didn't feel the need. That's it, that's the Dayton project, the nameless Dayton project. Maybe I should call it, I can't even, I can't think of anything, nothing at all. So help me out, give it a name. The five inch super surround or something like that. That's like the best I can come up with. Thanks guys, bye.